Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today in this episode, we're gonna be showing you what we've gotten started on our living room renovation. So we have entered a challenge called the One Room Challenge and we're beginning with our living room. It's the first room that we've really gone from like start to finish and renovated it completely. Um, we have, I guess in every single room done a little project here and there, but this challenge is really testing our follow through on completion. So in this episode, you're gonna see us starting with the walls because it's gonna be the messiest part of the whole renovation. So we're actually smoothing the texture of our walls using joint compound. And so you're gonna see that process in this episode. So let's get into the video. So we first started off by covering our floors with this paper that we got from Home Depot just to protect our floors. We then took the spatula and took off any um, parts of the wall that were especially raised. We then moved on to taking off any air vents and our light switches um, so that that wouldn't get gunked with joint compound. Here you see Seth preparing to move our light switch over to the right because given our design plans, we're actually adding trim to this doorway which would hit the light switch where it's at. So we're just going to uh, cut it out and move it over to the right and repair it with drywall so it'll look like it was there the entire time. If you haven't seen our intro to the challenge video, I'll have it linked below. There we talk about design and what we're expecting to do in this room as well as some inspiration board and pictures. That way you get a better idea of the type of design that we're going for and it would make a lot more sense as to why we're moving the switches. What Seth is doing here is what's called a scab. So basically it's pieces of wood that he's attaching to the studs that are already in the wall because this is gonna allow the piece of drywall that he's going to fill this hole with to adhere to something. So if he didn't add these pieces of wood, the drywall would have nothing to attach to. So it was definitely something necessary to do. That was exhausting just watching it. <laughs> but now he's attached his drywall piece, and now he's adding tape to the seams. And then he'll add the joint compound on top of all this to just seamlessly flow into the rest of the wall. Right, so I think we're ready to get started on showing you two different ways we're gonna skim coat. The first will be the traditional way. We have this mixture that we just have to mix up and we're gonna be using a traditional trowel and mud bucket to show you how people skim coat. I actually found this to be more difficult as a beginner. 
um, but I'm going to show you a different way that I actually found to be a lot easier. But for now, let me show you how Seth does it. You pick up the mud with your trowel and place it onto the wall and then you remove the access to be able to smooth any ridges that you find. You won't be able to get rid of all the ridges, we'll actually sand the remaining ridges down, but you want to get it as smooth as possible. Moving on to a technique that worked better for me is a tool called the magic trowel. We just take some joint compound and actually water it down and let me show you how it looks. You have to make your joint compound um, more like pancake batter when using this system and you actually roll on the joint compound as opposed to applying it with your knife because this trowel is actually a lot thinner. And then I would dip my trowel into a bucket of water um, before I would go to the wall and smooth it out and I found this technique to just be so much easier um, for a beginner. So we began to divide and conquer and um, use both techniques on different walls since we were pretty much getting the same um, result. It was just easier for us to get more done while the baby napped. So we actually came to a stopping point because we know that baby is gonna wake up from her nap soon. And this is something that we just can't really work on while she's awake, unless we give her like screen time, which we try to limit. So we're cleaning up, getting to a pause point. I think we're gonna have to go get some more joint compound, which with COVID right now, Seth's gonna be going alone. I'm not taking myself or the baby to Home Depot or Lowe's. But yeah, we got a lot done in that uh, almost two hour stretch. I'm really happy with where it's going. Skim coating is no joke though. It's a lot of work and we knew that we could probably get the same look with MDF board um, for a cheaper alternative, but we really wanted the experience of skim coating and it's a great budget friendly way to remove texture from your walls. So we're thankful for the opportunity to try it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's coming along. The other funny thing is that the color of the joint compound is exactly the same color that we've painted our walls, which is Agreeable Gray by Sherwin-Williams. It's this really, really pretty uh, taupe color. Um, you know, to us it looks great with white, black, brown, um, but it's technically gray, so it can go with so many different um, furniture colors. With that being said, it's hard to see what the texture looks like, um, like if it's peeking through or not, because you're just basically, it almost looks like we're just like smoothing the walls with paint because it's the same color. Anyway, kind of bizarre, but so far so good. We're coming to a stopping point, gonna get more product, and then I think for the second nap, we're gonna get back to it. So let's do that. So at this point, we were able to work on the same wall together. So I would roll on the joint compound and Seth would use this magic trowel to smooth it out. And it actually worked out pretty nicely. I feel like this wall didn't take near as long as both of us working on separate walls. And we were able to get it all finished and everything put away before the baby woke up. So that was huge for us.
Seth began sanding once it was all dry, just looking for any high points to smooth out, and this was very labor intensive. He actually switched to an orbital sander hooked up to a shop vac, and it still made quite the mess. Well, the dust is all finished. This is what the room is looking like. Next day, we decided to tape off you know, the doorway and, well, the TV was covered. <laughs> Not anymore. But um, as you can see, the dust is just crazy in here. We're gonna take our shop back and clean it all up. Just to kind of give you, um, you can kind of see how our paint's coming through, but the wall is smooth, which is exactly what we wanted. Sanding is the worst. So then I also used an orbital sander with a vacuum hooked up to it. And that was better, but then it's not very convenient when you need to be on a ladder and you got the shop back in one hand and the sander in the other and your hands are cramping. It was just a painful process. It was a lot of work and we had to kind of stop and go because we also have a baby in the house. And my biggest issue with the sanding was all the dust that it created. I mean, it was on everything. It yes. was the first time we didn't take enough steps as we should have to cover. And then when we did it the second time, we covered off more doorways and covered more furniture. And I'm really glad that we did. It will look really nice when it's all painted white with all the other details that we're planning. Speaking of which, we're ready for our next yeah. project. So this is only the first episode of our renovation series. Make sure you click that subscribe button because we're gonna be showing you guys um, how to shiplap our ceiling, which I am so excited about. This is a project I wanted done actually while I was pregnant and we just never got to it. We had popcorn ceilings in our entire house and the one room we didn't get to was our living room. I'll just add, it's going to be a shiplap look for cheap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> we're doing a shiplap look on the ceiling. We're not actually going to attach real shiplap to our ceiling because we want to be able to show you guys a really budget friendly way to get the shiplap look in your home without the cost of real shiplap. So we're going to show you how to do that in the next episode. Um, and we're also going to show you how to take off that popcorn texture. It, maybe if you have that texture in your home, it's definitely a really, really big, um, not fun project, but it has to be done before we actually show you how to do the shiplap. So, um, yeah, stay tuned and we're going to show you that, um, coming up. A few moments later. So you're gonna hold a samba and then make her ears are okay. All right, I love you, perro. Perro. <laughs> I love you, perro. <laughs>